water. Welcome to Wolf Chase Church of Christ. We are delighted that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. But it's Facebook, Zoom, or here on physically with us. We count it enough. We pray that something will be said this morning to encourage you on your Christian journey. If you are not a member of the body of Christ, we pray that you think more simply about your soul salvation. Let us remember to keep all the sick and shedding in our prayers and to keep one another in our prayers daily. It would clear your mind as Brother Avery comes and leads us in song. Wow. I So 
Good morning, church. Scripture reading for today come from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 37, 38, 39. That's Matthew 26, 37, 38, 39. New reading. Matthew 26, 37, 38, and took with him Peter and the two sons of Zechariah, and began to solve him in a very way. Then said, He wants to marry my father, the city of Solomon, even unto them. Share me, be here, and watch you. And he went to a little prayer and fell on his face and prayed, and, Oh, my Lord, if it is. But possibly let me so plan with only a man of the lips, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us with this opportunity that we can once again come before your throne of grace and worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done in our lives and all you continue to do. We just want to come before you, Lord God, and lay all our burdens down into you. Uplift you and give you honor and glory. Forgive us of our sins as Father's word or deed. May you take the blood of your loving Son Jesus and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, we come before you on behalf of our family members, friends, and co workers who are sick and shut in. May you be stored into a reasonable portion of health and strength. Be with our minister, Brother Elders, as he comes forth shortly to give us your word of truth. Continue to bless him and his family. Help him to recall all that he studied in preparation for today's lesson. Be with all the ministers in your kingdom who are preaching your word and teaching your word throughout this day. May we receive your word with open hearts and receptive minds. Heavenly Father, we pray that you continue to guide us, bless us, and build us up to be the kind of Christians you would have us to be. We pray that all things said, heard, and done throughout this worship service will be pleasing and acceptable in your divine and holy sight. We thank you, we praise you, and we ask these and all blessings in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Oh, in my way, trouble in my way, I have to find some time, but I have to find some time, so much time, in my way, I have to find some time, but I have to find some time, I have to find some time, I have to find some time, I have to find 
He has blessed us, and I'm thankful for you being here that you made the decision to get up this morning and to come and to worship our God. The Bible says that God is the spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It says that God wants, it's what God seeks such to worship him. God wants to be worshiped. God desire. God want to be worshipped. God want man to want to. Is that all right? God want us to want to worship Him because He's made the decision to come and to do that this morning. Thank you for your presence. If you are joining us online, we are thankful that you made the decision to worship with us. If you're visiting with us on either platform, we're thankful for your presence. Because we know you could have gone anywhere to worship, but you made a decision to come and to worship with us. So we're we're thankful for your presence and we pray that God might be glorified 
you might be in fire, and our God might be glorified when we leave here on this morning. I'm uh, I'm only to sing with him this morning. Five hundred, or rather, eight hundred fifty-three. Eight hundred and fifty-three. When we all get to heaven. Eight hundred and fifty-three. When we all get to heaven. We have sing the wonders of our Savior, sing His mercy and His grace. In the measure of understanding, He will for us a place when we all get to heaven. For they are rejoicing, and we all sing that glory. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, again at verse number 36. Again, that's Matthew chapter 26. Beginning at verse number 36. And it reads Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray to God. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of David, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. 
And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but thy will, but as thou will. And he coming unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And said unto Peter, What could ye not watch to me one hour? Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. It is Jesus in the garden of the Gethsemane. Before they came and took him away to crucify him. And he, with his disciples, come to the seminary. And he goes there to pray. He tells his disciples, to, some of them stayed here, he took some with him, but he told them, uh, stay here, watch with me. And it says he began to be very solid, heavy, distressed. So much so that I thought it was interesting that verse 37 says that he began to be sorrowful, he was distressed. Um, and, and then in verse 38, he shares that with his disciples. And I just tell you as I began, you know, it's okay to tell people when something ain't going like it. I tell you, it's, it's, I tell you again, it's all right to share with people when you're going through tough times. Yes. When stuff is bothering you, when stuff is on your heart, and you just, you're sorrowful and it's weighing heavy on you to call somebody and tell them about it. Yes. Share in our burden. Share in our grief. You know, you know, you know how we do, right? You know, Johnny got a trophy for something and we put it out there. Oh, we won the championship. Everybody knows. When I'm dealing with stuff that got me low, who do I tell? Who do I call? Do I do I share with them? Because I want the I want the people who care about me to know. You see, Jesus went with his disciples because they were the ones that cared with him. Also, I cared for him. Also, Judas was there. No but his closest confidant, Jesus, confided in him. And then, it's just a note you know, that we ought to always be willing to share with each other. That's who we are as God's people. Now, let me just tell you, well, that's just not me. You know, that's just not me. You ain't, it ain't about you. It's not God. Oh, y'all hear me, y'all listen. See, when you become a Christian, it's not about you. It's about God. And see, one of the lessons we learn from Jesus is that we don't hold stuff to ourselves because we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to God. Right. And so Jesus went there to pray. He told the disciples, stay here and watch with me. And I, 
I'm going to begin to pray. And he fell down to the ground and he began to pray. And y'all know the prayer, you know the story. I, I just believe there's a message in there for us this morning. And Jesus went to pray because he was on the, the verge of death. And he didn't want to die. And so he began to pray and he said, Father, take this cup from me. It's too tough for me to drink. It, it's, it's too hard for me to go through. I don't want to go through it. So as a, as, as a flesh, the fleshly part of Jesus says, Father, remove this cup from me because I don't want to die. Isn't that you and you? So much so he prayed and he prayed and he prayed with, 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 with sweat like drops of blood. He prayed earnestly because it was heavy on his heart. It was, it was distressing him and didn't want to have to do it. So he said, he said, the father, but, but that's what I want. He says, but not what I want, not, not as I will, but that will be done. But he went to the Father because he, he wanted to see, Father, if there's another way, help me out of this. So, as I mentioned, you ought to share with people when you're going through stuff, okay? but that's the first thing you do, but you ought to share with God. Go with it to Philippians chapter 4, with verse number 6. I just believe that we can learn from Jesus, the master teacher. Right. But not just the master teacher, the master example. The master example. In his toughest moments, in those tough times, he came to his, he came to his disciples. He said, I want you to watch with me. Watch and pray. That's what they should have been doing. But instead, they were sleeping. And so he began to pray to his father. It says, I the Lord over the righteous, and he has the open to our prayer. So one of the things you can know is be assured of that if you go to God, he will be there. And he hears us. The Bible says in Philippians 4, verse number 6, it says, What? Be careful for nothing. He said, Be careful for nothing. But in everything by what? Prayer by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving in your heart, let your requests be made known to God. This idea that Jesus went to prayer and that teaching us that when it is tough, when the tough get going, go to God. When you go up to your fellow Christian and you go up to your brothers and sisters, once you do that, go to God. And then you pray. He says this, he says, with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. Tell God what you want. There's an old song that says, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want, you ought to call him up. Call him up and tell Jesus what you want. Y'all ready? Yeah. It's a prayer. Tell God what we want. Don't forget to go to God. After you've gone to everybody else, don't forget to go to God. In everything. Isn't that what it says, Winston? Let your request be made known to God. It's what we do. And Jesus went to the Father and, and, and he praised his prayer. He said, Father, if it be thy will. But when you go to Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus was up in the, the Sermon on the Mount, and he was teaching them, when you begin Matthew chapter 6, Jesus began to teach us how to pray. And one of the things he said there, he said in verse number 9, pray ye therefore after this manner. I don't know, you can, you know, it's so easy because we say, you know, that's not, you know, because we don't really pray that prayer, but it's a lesson in there. Because verse number nine of Matthew chapter six, this is, I 
want to read that because I don't want you to miss it. This is Jesus teaching us in the garden for life. He says in verse 9, he says, What? After this matter, he says, Look, he said, Look, look at how they do it. He said, Don't do it like that. Verse 9, he said, After this matter, he said, What? Therefore, pray. You. This is how I want you to pray. He says, this is how I want you to pray. You ever thought about it? This is how you pray? Because you've got to have it. It's got to be foremost in your mind. When you pray, verse number 10 says what? Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. What? Thy will be done. Thy heaven. will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every time you pray, Lord, not my will, no will. This is how you ought to pray after this time. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You ever thought about it when you go to God and you pray to God and you pray and you ask him to God, let your request be known to God, and you get up that you never consider God? What do you mean I never consider God? Because you only go to God to still you. We only go to God to consider our heart. And what, what we ought to do is Jesus taught us a lesson. He said, when you go to God and you fall out and you pray to God, when, what you ought to say is, Lord, this is what I want. This is what I need. I know it. But I don't want it unless you want it, God. That's what he said, y'all. He says, Father, if it's possible, take this from me. See, we go to God. Look, you know, anybody ever go to God and pray to God and ask for something? You know you already have this. Oh, just me, right? <laughs> See, it's hard for us to figure out what God wants when we know what we want. And so we go to God and we ask God for what we want. Well, we don't realize that every time we go to God, we got to consider God. Because, Lord, I don't, here's what Jesus said. He says, Lord, I don't want to die. I mean, so much so, so heavy, it was so special that he began to sweat like drops of blood. But even in that distress, he says, Father, not my will, your will be done. When it matters that much, when it's that heavy on you, you know what you want. And we gotta be careful because we might not ever say, Lord, I know we are, because we know that I don't want to be, I don't want to be different, Lord. This is what I want. Lord, this is what I want. I don't want no nothing else. This is what I want. Jesus says, can you hear this? Listen to Jesus. He says, Father, let me read it so you kind of hear it. He says, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this stuff pass to me. Matthew 19, 26, from the message. Look at this. It is. it is Jesus saying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass to me. Take this from me. Help me know I don't have to die because I don't want to die. If it's possible, Father. If it's possible. Y'all know the problem with that is. It's not, it, and it's not a problem with Jesus. It's just a, it's a lesson for us because he's understood that. Because Jesus had to come to earth to die for the sins of all men. And as Paul said, is that this is, is, is a faithful and true saying that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's the purpose that he came. But he didn't go God and he said, Father, if it's possible. Now here's why he prayed it. Matthew 19, verse 26. The Bible says what Jesus said, make this statement to us. But Jesus beheld them. Jesus said unto them, 
With men, this is impossible. This is impossible. But with God, but listen, with God, God, all things are possible. All so Jesus knew it was possible because that God could do it because all things are possible with God. It is it's possible with God. But even with that understanding, see, it's not you just going to the to the city and, and go and fall down and pray and say, wait, well, you know you gotta die anyway. That's not it. It's going to the to it's, it's going to the city and praying with an understanding that God can change things. Yes, sir. If you go to God with that kind of understanding and assurance, it doesn't matter what it is, God can make a difference. But you kind of go to God like, you know, God, I just kind of hope maybe you can't give you, maybe, you know, I don't know, but you just kind of please us. No kind of confidence in God at all. You know, God say, Lord, if it's possible, because here's why he said, if it's possible, not that God can't do it. He may not want to, y'all. <laughs> So, Lord, I am not going to say, Lord, if it's possible, if it's your will, this is what I want. The Lord is in it, I can live with you. Well, can you pray like that, though? Can you go to God like that? You know, like that people stand up and say, I'm trying to make a part of decision in my life. God, pray for me. But well, we'll pray for you, but that decision might not be what God wants to do. Can you live with that? Oh, Jesus said, he says, Father, not now. He said, if it's possible. In verse 38, or rather, verse 39, he said, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me, but nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou, Father. And then he said to him, verse number 42, he says, my father, oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thou will be done for me. It's an understanding that, Lord, I know what I want. Thy will be done. And I tell you, y'all, when we go to God, this is, this is, the stomach is heavy on us. We ought to confide in each other. We ought to say, listen, you bear my burden. Help me bear the burden. Help me. Is anybody bearing the burdens with anybody else? Of course. Go with me, Philippians chapter 2, y'all. I just got to give you that. I, I go back to that. I just want to give you, I'm, I'm going to say that Philippians chapter 2, verse number 1, this idea, see, see, I'm just, I'm telling you, Jesus took his disciples with him, and when he was so, he was so stressed and everything, he talked to them about it. He said this, Philippians chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says what? If there be therefore any consolation, yeah, if there be any consolation, if there be any praise, if any comfort of love, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship, if any, fellowship, if any vows and mercy, vows and mercy, fulfill ye my joy, fulfill ye my joy, you may be like-minded. Like-minded. Really. Having the same Having love. The same love. Being of one accord. One accord. Keep reading. Of one mind. One mind. Keep reading. Let therefore let nothing be done through strife. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But what? But in loneliness of but mind. But in loneliness of mind. Let what? Let each esteem other. What? Never did themselves. Keep reading. Let not every man. Let not every man. What? Do what? Let not every man. You good? Let not every man seek his own thing. Read what it says. Let not every man on his own things, 
Not every man seek his own thing. God, this is who we ought to be as God's people. But what? But every man also. Also. It's got to be about other people. See, and we can't do that if we ain't sharing and talking with each other. I don't want nobody to know my business. You're a Christian. You don't belong to you. We, we, we are Christian. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you so so you don't tell anybody this. But when you became a Christian, you don't belong to you anymore. And then every man seek out his own thing, but the things of others. Watch this. Now, how am I going to seek the things of somebody else? And I'm never telling anybody anything about me. All right, I'm going to get down here. That ain't my sermon, y'all. That's a whole other sermon, y'all. But it's real for y'all because who we are in those moments we share with each other. And then we go to God in prayer. And our prayer ought to be what we want. It's what we should pray for. That is natural. It's what Jesus did. But it's with an understanding. Lord, not my will. Yo, yo, yo. That's where we live, y'all. And therein is the struggle. Therein is the struggle because we know what we want. Now, sometimes we don't know what God wants. So all we are left with is saying, Lord, if it's your will, Lord, if it's your will, I know you can do it. But what I really want is that you decide, not me. And then there are times when we know what God says. And yet we do something different. Or we don't pray, Lord, go here, we done. Because we kind of know about God's will does anyway. We just want to different to talk. Lord have mercy. There are folks who have known what God said, and then they go to God and say, Lord, help me get, help me understand. Lord, help me decide. Lord, help me decide. And then you go do something different than what God said. I ain't talking about y'all, you're talking about a whole different group of people. God, what is your will? For me, I'm seeking the will. I'm not seeking what I want. It's crazy because Jesus went to the cross and went to the city in the garden, praying to God for what he wanted. And it's what we do. But we can't ever go and say, Lord, I know it's possible with you that you can do this. I know it's possible. But I also know if it's not your will for me and you don't want it for me, then I don't want it. Because what I want, Lord, is what you want. Although we ain't saying that, we say, Lord, you know what I want, give it to me. You know what I want, give it to me. You know what I want, Lord, give it to me. I know we don't demand it like that, but we do, y'all. Because we forget it's about God and not about us. <laughs> we forget it's about God and it's not about us. Jesus said, Lord, if it's possible, remove this cup from me. You see, Jesus really had to die, y'all. You, know? you see, it's, 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 no, I mean, we know that. I mean, God, Jesus, Jesus even talked about this death. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus said that the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of the enemy. And they're going to kill you. And on the third day, I'll go to kill Jesus understood he was going to die. He knew that. But he knew that God could change it if it was his will. But he prayed. He came to his disciples. They were sleeping. And after the third time, he said, sleep on them. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of his enemy. And he got up after prayer. He got up 
and you make it to society. I don't want you to miss that, y'all. Because see, if you miss this, you'll be like the disciple that was sleeping. And when you're supposed to be watching and praying, sometimes we're sleeping. We don't even know God. Listen, there are situations that happen in life, and you be thinking, and folks say, look, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, just leave God out of here. What are we doing, y'all? Just leave God out of here. Oh, we don't say it that emphatically, but we do. Yeah. Because in so many times, in so many situations, and in so many decision making, we left God. We just left out God. Because Lord, it ain't about it ain't about it ain't about what I want, Lord. It's about what you want. And what was interesting, I thought it was so interesting, if the disciples were not sleeping, they could have heard Jesus. But they were sleeping. They never got the message. Whether or not they never got the message. They didn't get the message, did they? But that prayer is a teaching moment. How to pray, when you pray, how to pray, how to go to God. It can't ever be selfish. And it can't ever be what I really want. Just that's all I want. It has to always be, Father, thy will be done. Always, always. And maybe God don't want that for me. And it's not what God wants for me. When you pray, and when God don't give you what you want, you know what you do? You get up and you go do what God says. That's what we do. That's what Jesus did. He got up and he went to crucify. That's what we left. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 5, y'all. In Hebrews chapter 5, this is an understanding that Jesus, y'all, because I want you to know what's locked in Jesus getting up and going to get crucified. What's locked in there? That we all should learn that we don't be sleep at the wheel. What's locked in that is this. Hebrews 5, he says in verse number 7 that he know God heard it because he, he with, with strong crying, he know God heard it. But verse number 7, read verse 7 for me. Who in the days of his flesh, the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayer, he had offered up Prayer and supplications, supplications with strong cries, with strong cries, and tears, and tears unto him that was able. He knew God was able, y'all. He knew God was able. That's right. Go ahead and read what he said. Able to save him. Able to save him. From death. I want you to hear, because I don't want you to think Jesus just went and prayed and he didn't you know him though he was going to die anyway. No, he was really praying that God would, if it was possible, Lord, this is what I want. Because this thing is so heavy on it and it's stressing me out so much, I don't want to deal with it. So if you could just remove it from me, because I know you can do it, Lord, help me. And say he's crying and with tears. Have you ever been in a situation where you have gone to God and, and ain't nobody else can help you out? You have gone and spoken to talk to your brothers and sisters, you talk to mama and dad, and ain't nobody can help you, and you go to God. Say, Lord, help me. Even in that moment, it says, Lord, not my will, your will be done. Because listen, Lord, I know you can help me bear whatever it is. When I bet Jesus was sorrowful, he was distressful, he was so heavy. Because he's looking at the cross and what he's got to go through. But God helped him bear it, God. And I tell you, God can help us bear it too. There is nothing too hard for God. But we make all kinds of decisions for us, for us, never 
ever thinking about what God's will really is, or oh, we know what God's will is, and be avoided because I pray, I pray, and see, and I, and this is what I heard, and I, this is what I learned after I prayed. God's will is still the same. You go look for another answer, but God's will is right here in the book. And you're looking for another answer, and you start doing like denominations, start twisting and turning all kinds of stuff, trying to make you fit your situations, and not really knowing that what God really wants is to do the Lord's will and to do it. Watch what Jesus did, Lord. He knew he was able to save him. Read what he said in this. And was heard. He was heard. And that he feared. And that he feared. He greeted. No, he were a son. He said, now, no, he was. Now, Jesus was God's son. Though he were a son. He said, what? He had learned to be obedient. And we got to learn obedience to him. That's what we got to learn. He said, Lord, you know, it's not what I want to do. But, Lord, if that's what your will is, I'll do it. Lord, that's, if that's what your will is, if you say, hey, I need to move to that people. You know, some folks lie on God and say they you come to move that field. But this is just an example, y'all. God ain't told you to move that field. That's an upset. But if God says go to that field, then I will not will be and I get up and go. Because Lord, I just want to do your will. I want to be obedient. See, a part of saying your will be done is my being obedient to God. See, all that little stuff about where you move to and when you move and all that, man, that's about you. That's about you. What God wants you to do is to seek his will and set your life to it. And every time something conflict in your life and with God's word, you say, Lord, I want to do your will and not my own. But we keep trying to do this. We keep trying to make God feel that I will feel so we can do what we want to do and be justified in doing it. And when we finish, y'all, it still ain't God's will. And we feel as good as we want to feel about it, but it ain't what God said. See, what's not in, Lord, your will be done, is obedience. Man, if Jesus was the son and he had to learn obedience, what do you think about us? Though he was a son, yet learned he obedience. Well, how? He said, listen. By the things which he suffered. By the things he suffered. And doing by what? He said. And being made perfect. And being made perfect. He became the author. He became the author of eternal salvation. To who? To all them that obey. To everybody that's going to say, Lord, thy son will know him. I just want to do your will, Lord. Not mine. I say this a hundred times, and maybe it won't be enough. But you came to me now with your will. It has to be what God wants. Yes. It can't be selfish. Listen, Jesus says this. In Matthew 16 and verse number 24, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. It is locked in. I don't want it to be about what I want, Lord. I want it to be what you want. Hebrews 11 and verse number 6. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that come to God must believe that he is, and he is a reward of him that diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's what we're trying to do. It's in Adam's prayer this morning that the things we do might be pleasing and acceptable in his sight. That's not just in worship, that's in our lives. It's every day of our lives, Lord, that what we do, what decision I made, might be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And the only way you can ever do that is when you start trying to make that decision, you first turn to to God. And you don't think about God, I'm telling you, you're going to make a selfish decision. You're going to say, Lord, 
I don't want to die. And you're going to get up and you're going to go aboard crucifixion. You're going to get up and you're going to avoid crucifixion because it's not what you want and it's only about what you want. But when you consider God, you say, Lord, if I must drink it, let me drink it. No matter how bitter it is, no matter how hard it is, no matter how tough it is, Lord, let me drink it. Because here's what I know. It's during those times when I get up and go face crucifixion. See, I don't have to face it by myself. Because I know God is with me. I know God is able with me. See, it is Jesus. It is, it is, it is, it is. The Hebrew writer telling that story. And then Paul kind of does the same thing. Go back to Philippians with me, what we're Philippians chapter 2. When he talked about bearing each other's burdens, you got to hear this, y'all. Because this is Jesus. And if Jesus operated like that, how dare we do something different? Jesus was God's son, but yet Jesus was locked in. What does my father want? Verse number five, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse six says what? Who being in the form of God. the form of God, not thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Says what? But made himself with no reputation. No reputation. And what? And took, um, upon him. And took upon him sinful flesh. Can you imagine God? You imagine God taking on flesh that he made. He took on flesh, third ring And was made in the likeness of man. Like this is man. Read what it says. And being found and being fashion, found in fashion as a man, as a man he humbled himself. He humbled himself. How? And became obedient. Became obedient to God. Humble yourself. Become obedient. It's what God wants. It's not about us. It's about God. I know sometimes we get confused. We think it's about us. But really it's about God. And it's about what God wants. And every time we do something, whatever it is, whatever, whatever decision we're making, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it's pertaining to, Lord, I just want to be your will. But now that's not what I want. Because see, Lord, what I really want it is. And you tell God that, and that's okay. But to get up with this understanding, Lord, but if that's not what you want for me, I don't want it either. Can you do that? Lord, if that's not what you want for me, I know that's what I want, but if, not, if that's not what you want for me, Lord, I don't want it either. And you move through life with that kind of understanding. Every time I pray, and I move through life, Lord, that's what I, that's what I really want. I know what I want, but what I really want is what you want. Yeah, I just want to encourage you this morning. Jesus humbled himself. And became obedient. He says, "What well, unto death, unto death." And he got up and went out to Jesus. Even what? Even the death of the cross. Death of the cross. <laughs> if it means I must drink it, let me drink it, God. Lord, not my will, Thy will be done. I just want to encourage you. Move through life. With that understanding, Lord, as we learn from Jesus in the garden, in, in the toughest moments, see, what makes that so profound to me is not just a prayer that Jesus prayed, but it's a prayer that he prayed in his darkest moment, in his toughest moment. He can still say, Lord, 
Not my will. Die with Not my will. Die with God, I just want to encourage you this morning. Let's keep seeking God's will. Seeking what God wants for us. Even seeking what God wants for this church, for my individual life. Seeking what God wants for us as a congregation. All in, saying, Lord, if that's what you want, we are willing to do it. If you live life like that, I tell you, God will bless you. But here's the, here's the, here's the end of the song. And we get to go to heaven when we die. Amen. That's the ultimate. I don't want to stand before God. I would not want to stand before God. Trying to explain God in this situation, I know what he said, but then I do do it. I just want to encourage you, y'all. Lord, not my will. Thy will be done. It's one that if you're here and you're not a Christian, you ought to be one. Believe that Jesus came from heaven, suffered and died on the cross. You see, Christ Jesus left heaven and he came to earth and they crucified him. Buried him in the grave, and on the third day he rose again. Did you hear that and believe that? Believe he did that for you. Be willing to turn your life around. It says, I will repent of my sin. I, I remember Brother Lewis, my, 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 my preacher, I'll read the gospel. And Brother Lewis said, Repentance is this. He says, If you've been walking this way, he said, You turn around and you start walking this way. See, that means if, 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 what God, if what God did by sending Jesus to die for you means something, you can turn your life around. And then you'll be willing to stand before man and say, yes, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And submit to being buried in baptism with him for the remission of your sins. Everything you've never done will be washed away. You become a new creature in Christ. You're faithful unto death. You'll receive the crown of God. You're a Christian, but you haven't been all that God would have you to be. I want to encourage you. If you sin, get that right with God. Repent, confess, we're praying with you for you. God will forget you. And all of us together keep working out our soul salvation. So if you stand in here, you're actually making up this kind of stand and together we see. And you make Morning. 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 Uh, the morning. Open the 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 open 
Thank you, Dr. Brown, for that son that the Holy Spirit has blessed you for the first time. On the video game, I'll be thinking of the first time. Is he going to say that? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Let us pray for the cup. The God wants to give thanks for this cup that represents the Son of the Lord and pray that we take it for clean hands. Amen. This concludes the fourth and third.
It's been a good day, amen. amen. It's always so great for every opportunity that we have to assemble and worship God in spirit and truth. We're so thankful for your presence here today. We've got a good number here today. We're so thankful for those who do not be with us here in person, but who are tuning in with us via social media. And we hope that the things that have been said and done here will be a source of encouragement for you, one that will cause you to, to look closely at your relationship with, with the Lord. And if you do not share our religious conviction as members of the body of Christ, we hope that you will ask any questions that you may have. The Bible instructs us to be prepared to give an answer for the things that we believe. And so we stand ready in doing so. And so we hope that you will make those questions known. Remember our two our ladies too tonight, I would say. If you miss it, if you miss it, some good teaching and some good fellowship among our ladies, you can get that information on our website. And uh, the, the Zoom information to tune in for that and, and be a part of that. If you have not had an opportunity to do so and, and you can make opportunities to do that, you will be very encouraged. It's given an opportunity for our ladies to to uh, to uh, to share their talents among themselves and to, to teach and to learn and to be encouraged uh, through that and bunch of the teacher learning. And in that in that um, in that class, so please uh, take advantage of that opportunity. Also, our midweek Bible study, um, the Lord joins that. Also, there as well, we are having a really good study on how to study God's Word. You will be very encouraged by that. Um, it's so good to see Sister Cage and her family. We've been praying for you, sister. We continue to pray for you. We continue to lift you up to God in anything, any way that we can be of service to you. We know that we stand ready um, to, to be of service to you and your family. God bless you. As well as others who have been out in the, the various regions. We, we, we continue to pray for our brethren. We've always done as a group chase family a great job of encouraging each other and being there for one another through times of, uh, of uh, challenging times. And so we will continue uh, to be that, 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 that force of influence. Say thank you. We have a card here. Set it by special thanks. What joy to know you had a part in building someone's, someone else's heart with the things that are the reflection of God's goodness and the steadfast love. What you have done will be remembered in, in my heart always. Thank you all so much, Sister Helen Page. And for those who are not here, Sister Page lost her husband and they Spiritualized. Was it this past week? No, the week before last. And uh, we attended that. And uh, we, we have had opportunity uh, to talk and speak and fellowship with the family. And it's so good when you go going through times like that. that Sister Kay's got a good support system in the family. And, uh, and, and we, as a spiritual family, we continue to support it. In her family in a big way. Are there any other announcements? Uh, to our businesses, we again, we are so thankful uh, that you have chosen to be here with us. And, and again, we hope that you will, um, will consider the things that you've heard today and, uh, and be encouraged by them. We are a group of people who are just trying to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. And we want to encourage uh, everyone that we can for the cause of Christ. Remember, um, our um, continue to pray for our efforts as we wait for code enforcement to give us approval to uh, 
uh, to, to, to break ground, to, to start building that building, and actually grow closer to that process. Let us continue to keep uh, foremost in front of us the things of God and the purpose and the reason that we're here. And that's to serve God and, and to, to share His goodness with all souls. And so continue to pray for that. So say that now. Amen. Uh, Brother uh, DJ has a friend here with us, and we're thankful. And Alexis, uh, more friends here with us, and we're thankful to have you. And if there are any others of uh, Angela's uh, girlfriends here with us, and we're thankful uh, for you to be here, as well as others. If I have overlooked anyone else, we're always thankful for for, for any time that you take out the business schedule. And you come and be with us. If there's no other announcements, we have to stand. Uh, if you would stand, we have a closing song. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's so good to, to come in and to see Brother Avery. Uh, Brother Avery is, is living in the Nashville area, working, and uh, he's a great, as you can see, he's great. For those who never heard of uh, Brother Avery, he's a great songwriter, faithful to the Lord, and we're thankful. For you and your presence. Amen. He's no visitor, so I'm, I'm trying to find a job here in Memphis and he's coming back home. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 I was one lost in sin, but Jesus took me And the life of faith in my soul.